Our next guest, very interesting person. Artists often explore their own experiences through their art. Our next guest is affected by his rootlessness and his search for belonging. He comes from an ethnic group in China whose very name means visitor. He's one of the rare people considered indigenous to Hong Kong, and this place has always been dominated by newcomers. When he came to Canada as a young boy, he once again struggled to adjust to the strange culture. I first became intrigued about him as I would often pass by his public art on the Yale Town seawall, which features writing in Chinook, the part native, part non-native trade language that was spoken here 100 years ago. Please welcome Henry Tsang. In 2003, I was a graduate student at the University of California, Irvine, located in famous Orange County, just south of LA. Famous because of its lifestyle that epitomizes the American dream, with its dramatic close coastline, highest income per capita in the US in Newport Beach, and its master planned gated communities. My graduate thesis focused on this lifestyle of desire, this dreamscape landscape, just minutes on the freeway from another feat of imagineering, Disneyland. While there, I found out about a similar place in a land far, far away. Architects and interior designers from Orange County, California had been hired by a Chinese developer to create an authentic American-style gated community near the future site of the Summer Olympics in Beijing. I was fascinated by this fetishization of the West this reverse Chinatown. It wasn't just the design of Orange County, or Jujin, as it was marketed in Chinese, that was interesting. It was who bought into it and what it represented to them. This was not a home away from home for expat Americans or Canadians. The clientele was local Chinese, mostly professionals, business folks, and those who worked in the media industry. Orange County was an opportunity for the nouveau riche, to own a dream home with a two or three car garage, a huge wine cellar, exercise room, you name it. What does it mean for the Chinese to earnestly replicate authentic Southern California residential architecture when the housing design styles offered are marketed as Italian, French, and Spanish? <laughs> what happens to the American dream when it's translated into Chinese? For my thesis, I created a four-channel video installation entitled Orange County that was shot in gated communities in central Orange County, California, and Orange County, Beijing. The four videos of a single-family house in each location are presented on four adjacent walls surrounding the viewer. In each video, a figure walks in front of one house to the next, passing through time and time zones. What kind of body is fluid enough to move between and across these spaces, physically, politically? What kind of identity fits in front of such a backdrop when the particularities and specificities of this landscape have been so carefully controlled to appear seemingly seamless, especially on the surface? How does this built community reflect the individual, the social, the cultural? Can it? Or is community building just a game where the players don't make up the rules, they just copy them from someone else, like a game of follow the leader? I'd been curious about questions of home and place for some time. In 1997, I completed a public art commission at the foot of Drake Street in False Creek that Sam referred to earlier, Welcome to the Land of Light, which incorporates Chinook jargon, the West Coast trade language, and English, the language that replaced it underscored by fiber optic lighting, to speak about the promise of technology and how different cultures have come together here to build a new life on unceded Coast Salish territory. So I knew a little bit about the history of False Creek and its transformations over the past century or so. However, I was surprised to learn of its reflection in the Arabian desert through architecture critic Trevor Boddy. It was like the Orange County phenomenon, but on a grander scale. But unlike the Beijing development, 
there was no reference to its supposed source, Vancouver. This was, after all, Dubai, fresh and original, designed to capture the explosive growth of capital in the Middle East, South Asia, and beyond. There is a man who provides a link between these two disparate sites. Architect Stanley Kwok had been involved in the urban regeneration of False Creek since 1981 with the BC Place Corporation, which spawned BC Place Stadium and Expo 86. After Premier Bill van der Zam's decision to release the lands for private sector development, Stanley Kwok stepped down from the Crown Corporation and then was quickly hired by Hong Kong-based Le Gassing to bid on the same property he had been working on since the early 80s, which they won. He stayed with Concord Pacific Developments until the mid-90s and shortly thereafter was asked by Dubai real estate developer Imar for ideas on developing a piece of landlocked property west of Dubai. Mr. Kwok's proposal was to dig a channel from the Persian Gulf and create their own waterfront, a plan built on his long-standing experience north of False Creek. The Dubai Marina was a success for MR and provided them with a formula for other developments in Dubai and the region. Key to the project was their version of our seawall walkway, known there as the Marina Walk. In a city with few public spaces, if any, this became a destination point, or line, rather, for those who didn't want to spend even more time in another shopping mall. The similarities between False Creek and Dubai Marina can be uncanny. The nexus, nexus of global capital, design, and constructing desire for luxury lifestyle living became the basis of Maria, a long-term research project that Simon Levin, Glenn Lowry, and myself have been working on for the past six years. Meaning reflection or mirror in Arabic, Mariah has taken the form of art exhibitions with photographs, videos, and installations, public engagements and talks, public walks, roundtable discussions, and an interactive online platform. Playing with the trope of the seawall walkway as a thread that ties these two sites together, Mariah proposes a promenade that stretches across 12 time zones that not only connects but also blurs the here and elsewhere. What does it mean when Vancouver is in Dubai? Would that mean Dubai is here too? What and who else are here? What forces and influences are at play that we are not aware of? For the viewer, they experience the seawall and the city from above as an architect, developer, urban planner, penthouse owner, or domestic worker. But who is the subject? The viewer above or the walkers below? What opportunities are there for engagement, for connecting, for making a difference? What does it mean when one place dissolves into another beneath your very feet? When the world becomes increasingly the same from the clothes in our bodies to the food we put into our bodies and the buildings and roads and social institutions that direct and control our bodies, where are we in all of this? Thank you.